I believe that it's a quote from Daniel Kahneman or Tversky that, that you turned me on to about the benefits of being a little bit underemployed. And yes. going from that, let's talk a little bit about your own walking routine, which is basically to somebody else looks like something that a 82 year old retired grandfather would do. So talk about both of those. Uh, so the advantage of being a little underemployed is that it gives you time to you just kind of unstructured spare time in your head where you're not you're not on the schedule you're not on the clock you're just kind of daydreaming in a way that is really conducive to creative thinking and coming up with ideas and figuring things out not just creative work but just trying to figure out problems in your head it's hard to do that if all the bandwidth in your head is taken up but if you're a little bit underemployed and you have a couple hours on your day to do nothing nothing scheduled nothing to do nothing is due on the clock you're just kind of aimlessly thinking, wandering around. That is when you can get a lot done and figure out, do your best creative work, do your best work. So that's what I do. Like most of my quote unquote writing, I feel like it happens when I go for walks. Because when I sit at my desk and try to crank my brain, nothing comes out. It doesn't work. I just can't. I just don't work very well sitting down. And then if I ever get some sort of writer's block where I'm just trying to think an article through, I go for walks and I go for two or three walks per day. And that's where all of the, that's where all the writing happens. I, sometimes I take, I usually take notes when I walk. Um, and there's actually a lot of studies on this, that people's brains work differently and better when they're walking because you're alert. You have to make sure that you're not going to trip over this. You got to make sure are, are there cars coming? You got to be alert of your surroundings in a way that gets your brain moving versus when you sit at your comfortable desk and you sit at your chair, that you're, it's just easier for your brain to just kind of go into neutral and kind of coast. I don't think that's a scientific explanation, but that's my understanding of it. So I, that's, that's for me is a lot of walking, which again, doesn't look like work. I tell my wife I'm going for a walk. It doesn't, doesn't she doesn't think I'm working, but that's when I get most of my work done. Yeah, the poet Mary Oliver, which she so she hated buildings, and so she would go out in nature every single morning, and she said that's just where she wrote everything. So she did what you did, and there was actually a reason for this. She grew up very poor, and so she would go out and actually pick up fruits and vegetables, and as she was doing that in the three or four hours that it took, she would just come up with ideas, and she would have her notebook, and that's how she would write her poetry. So what are you doing when you go for a walk? How would you think about the spectrum between trying to explicitly create an idea? So say that you're writing about psychology, where you go, then you listen to a uh, to a, who's the professor from Stanford, Sapolsky. You go listen to a Sapolsky psychology lecture, so that'd be like an explicit. The other more implicit version would be, I'm going to leave everything at home, just go with a notebook, and then sort of see what comes up. How would you think about how what you actually do when you walk? I don't think it's either of those. It's I, I put on my headphones and I listen to music uh, loud, which I know you're not supposed to do. Everyone who says, like the value of walking says, don't listen to music. No, I listen to music. I, I enjoy it. And I don't try to force it. You can't. You can't schedule creativity. You can't force it. Or let, let's leave it aside creativity. That kind of sounds like more pretentious than it should be. But just trying to solve problems in your head. Whatever it is you do for work, you're trying to figure it out. You can't force it. You can't schedule it. You can't say, okay, I'm going to go for a walk now. And you know, so I'm going to come up with this idea in the next 10 minutes. I just think if you just let it be and let it flow naturally, you're going to start doing your better thinking as you're walking. Even if you're listening to music, listening to something else. So uh, I always have, I always have my, my AirPods on listening to stuff. I don't listen to podcasts when I walk. It's always music. But that's when I do my best. And the notes that I take, I just shoot myself emails. I send emails to myself with just a little, uh, just a couple words in a subject line. And then when I get back to my desk, I can kind of crystallize those and put those together. Uh, so that's what it is. I, I never start a walk with a goal of, okay, I need to figure out X. I feel like it just kind of, it's, and it, it doesn't always work. I don't, it's not like every walk that I come back from, I've got great ideas. It's not even close to that but I'm much more likely to figure things out and get creative and just try to, if I'm writing something and I, I'm stuck, I don't know why that happened, the odds of me figuring it out on a walk are much greater than the odds of me just sitting at my desk trying to think it through. What kind of music do you listen to? 90s hip hop. Always? 80% of the time. Nice. 